we think that information now is more powerful than ever. Okay, um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lodi Andrian, I'm your host for this session. Um, now we are gonna talk about two ways communication with data with our speaker, Mikel Santa Susana from Domestic Data Streamers. So welcome and thank you for joining us uh, in the Future Force Fast 2020 with the theme facing the new normal. Uh, the event is organized by ICRA, a platform that helps individuals and companies to answer business challenges through data and technology. Um, here, we open up new discussion and perspectives uh, during the difficult and this unprecedented times so that small and medium businesses and technology talents can understand the challenges that might be faced permanently. So we can all not only survive through this pandemic, but also adapt and success um, in the future. So this event is partnering with Bagirata, a peer-to-peer -peer wealth distribution tool as a platform for donation for this event. Um, this is a different way to donate using a simple technology that is directly targeted to those in need. Um, so don't forget to scan the QR code in the bottom of the screen uh, or type bagirata.id in your uh, browser. And thanks uh, to the main sponsor, Claudera, Monroe, and other sponsors, Bagirata as a donation partner, Data Science Indonesia as a community partner, Thank you also to Tempo.co and Info Computer as media partners. And thanks for the, all the speakers and crew who helped make this happen. Um, don't forget to post this conference in social media with the hashtag FutureForceFest 2020 or hashtag uh, Siap Hadapi Perubahan dan hashtag Sebar Semangat Dari Rumah. Okay, uh, let's start. I want to introduce you to, uh, to you guys, uh, our speaker from Barcelona. Uh, Mikel Santa Susana, a CEO from Domestic Data Streamers. Um, welcome, Mikel. Hi, Lodi. Thanks for Hi. the introduction. How are you? How are you? Good, good. We are still here in the morning. It's 11 in Barcelona. It's a sunny day that we cannot enjoy to go out, but it will be very nice to be here discussing with you today. Yeah. How's the uh, work from home self quarantine situation right now? I mean, we, we already got used to that. Uh, the beginning, it was very strange because of mm. social distancing. And we, uh, in my studio, we are like a creative team and we have like lots of interactions between, you know, designers and technologists and communicators. And we are all time from desk to desk. But now we, I think we, we learn how to work like more organized. Like mm. you only then request something to someone if you really need it. So it's, it has some advantages and some disadvantages, but now we, we're used to it and it's, it's not that bad, actually. Of course, we miss to, to be back together, but yeah, we, we just adapted. Cool. Okay. Um, could you briefly introduce your role and your background to us? Okay. Yeah, so I'm an engineer. I studied civil engineering and, well, I, I've have some experience in construction work, so something like very different from what we were going to talk about today. But then being project manager, and I, there, there was a, like a huge crisis in Spain in construction, and then I thought that I wanted to do something else, and I met this team. It's a communication agency, Domestic Data Streamers, and I started there as a project manager, but in very different topics. And after four years in the company, now I'm managing the operations, so mm. like all the new projects coming, I do the planning for the projects, we set the teams, and, and I oversee like the, the productions. And, and yeah, so this is a bit, little bit my role, organization, providing the tools for the team, and, and yeah, managing uh, technical projects with 
with the team. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, let's go into our first part then. Uh, Mikael will do a, a little presentation about this team for today, two ways communications with data, right? And please, uh, Mikael, uh, show the presentation. Okay, let's start. Perfect. So, yeah, I since I believe like uh, some of the audience doesn't know domestic, so I thought it was interesting to explain uh, why we are here, what do we do, and and how you now we can give uh, our point of view to to how we can use data um, in the current situation, but also like what we have been doing in in the past, right? So. The topic will be about how do we uh, work with data. So I was say, saying I'm part of this uh, team in Barcelona. I used to introduce my team this way, but I think now I can introduce my team this way as we are working lockdown, everyone from home. And, and it's a mix of you know creative uh, people, people from communication, researchers, uh, technologists, scientists, and designers. So we are. Uh, a mix of, of different roles, and, and we work in communication projects. So we are a design and communication studio. We do uh, communication campaigns and also installations for museums, exhibitions, and and basically anything that can be can connect people and information through data and interaction, right? So I want to talk where this idea of what we do came from, and and so you will understand a little bit our approach. So it comes from the idea that uh, humans are able to, you know, convert a reality as complex as a maybe like you know, a new birth, a newborn into into one number, into data, right? Into into this number, and we can do the same with 100 or 1,000. We can do uh, the abstraction and convert into like raw uh, data. But when we are doing this, you can understand that we are missing lots of uh, you know information that 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 only with data we cannot explain, right? So also, like I think another example that everyone understands due to the situation that we are right now, um, this is a sentence from Joseph Stalin, which uh, knew what he was talking about at that time. One death is a tragedy, right? Like one million is just a statistic. Now we are just like counting statistics, which is so sad, right? But it is because, well, at the end, like um, we are overwhelmed with the situation, and then we need the figures to understand it in a different way, realities, right? But there is much more uh, deep layers to, to explore in, in what is happening. So sometimes um, what we believe is that data makes uh, what we perceive as reality and what is the reality to be a part. And our goal at domestic is to make these two uh, elements closer. And it is not an easy task. Because um, as you, as we all know, we live in this era of information overwhelm. So we uh, overload of information. We are uh, daily, constantly um, exposed to many, many inputs of, of information. So it's very difficult for information and data to stand out and really connect with people. So what we're experiencing is that uh, there is a lack of empathy between people and, and information. And that's not the problem itself, but this will lead into lack of action. So that's what we want to, to change. We want to find new ways to interact with data. Okay, so I, I've seen like in the, in the sessions and in the talks here, there's you know, lots of talks of data visualization, which I think is one of the topics that, that we need to explore, how we can have like better tools to, to visualize data. Um, we are still using the same tools as 200 50 years ago, right? But my talk, it would be more focused, or this discussion with Lodi would be more focused on how we can also take a look on other aspects uh, of communication uh, with data. So the audiovisual part is very important, but um, also we believe that you know when you let people to say something, when people are part of the conversation, and or when people do an interaction, when they do something, some action, they will retain more information. So that's why we focus a lot of interactivity and open dialogue. That's what we call like this two-way data communication. That, that's what we are referring. And um, on the top of that, like once you have your audience, you have your message, if it, even if it's commercial or non-commercial, doesn't matter, then you have like the perfect mix to generate new knowledge, right? So that's why like open dialogues are so important because now you have you all the audience there, 
like in this um, talk, for instance, and people are able then to contribute to ask, and we we can learn, you know, from each other. So we uh, foster this uh, knowledge generation by open dialogues. So yeah, having said all this, like I wanted to show a few examples of um, the first project that we started. So we started as a very small studio doing artistic representations of data, like um, in museums. So in in very different ways, in ways that people could relate to information in different ways, like in, in ways that we are not used to relate with information. And then we started to introduce this interactive um, and, and dialogue um, concept in which this, for instance, is like a very simple survey. So instead of asking people to fill up a type form, there was you, you were get, um, getting like a, a thread and you were answering uh, different questions here. So you have like a nice visualization of a survey, for instance. So this is one of the initial examples of um, and, and the first test that we were doing. We have also converted data into, into food. Uh, this is, was a very interesting project in which we were talking about um, sex habits in Spain. So by eating this dish, you could read uh, some data related to that. And depending if it was more spicy, it was more sweet, then you could understand you know, what were the proportions of the, of the data that was explained. And, and of course, then it turned into something like more commercial. We grow a little bit, and we've done a lot of campaigns. I'm showing here most of like the physical ones, uh, because I think that they are also interesting to understand the, the, the point of view that I'm trying to give. This is a festival in which we put, um, the, this was a, a advertising of a brand in a festival, but we put these gates. So the brand was positioning, but at the same time was opening conversations with the audience. So it was an interaction so easy as just like let people flow in and, and answer between questions of A or B in, in this very simple and engaging way. So they were getting like new information and also like opening a dialogue with the audience. There was an interesting one that I wanted to, to, to explain. Uh, we put one that asked uh, if you were looking for love tonight or for the love of your life right in the festival so it was very interesting to see how then the behavior of people that change and 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 people came in groups and then they split and they choose different options but then then you know like uh, there was a lot of interactions um, being generated but by, by just a question as simple as this one right and we asked their questions also like in the format of a handshake which unfortunately we cannot do it right now but you see like we, we take any opportunity to do uh, to be creative and find ways to engage with people and and communicate and also get data and and then we put all these into a into a report because everything that we do our vision is to be you know transparent with uh, with the data and, and and get all this knowledge um, accessible for um, the audience uh, the festival the brand so everyone can learn from what the interactions that we had and, and yeah, just a couple more examples to finish. Um, this is a data visualization that we've done in a, in a cinema. Uh, it was a report from Oxfam of inequality in Spain. So we were representing like different percentages of how many people have access to education or not in Spain by using the you know spotlights in a, in a cinema. So it was like visualization on the people itself. Um, so as you see, like we are using always like this very natural and, and human language to, to communicate data and to gather new data. And yeah, th I think this is a final one I wanted to show. We even got the opportunity to be in a prison. And we did uh, an installation that was discussing on justice inside the prison. So it was as simple as this one. There were like very difficult questions to answer in a very simple way by just voting and putting like one of these little stones in the balance so you could see like the result. And questions were, so just, you prefer innocent person in jail or 10 guilty criminals on the streets? So they were always like very difficult questions to answer, but in this very like um, simple way and, and also like it was a metaphor of, of, of the discussion. And, and yeah, so you just had to take one of these pieces and, and vote. And yeah, and, and finally also like, well, we, we've been like uh, all around the world with these experiments. We even put like Ban Ki-moon in a, in a time machine. And, and the rest of politicians of the United Nations Assembly to um, isolate them and bring them in a very intimate moment back to their childhood. So to understand the importance of, of that moment. So to raise awareness of that and, and help UNICEF um, generate an impact on that. So that's the kind of experience that we um, create. 
And, and a few words on the new normal, uh, because now we need to reframe uh, some of the things that we do. Um, my, my point of view or the point of view of my, of my team is that, well, we are a bit concerned of, um, of this situation related to, to data and information because we think that information now is more powerful than ever. So people need to be connected to information. People need to be well informed. And, and this is a, you know, this is a powerful tool that we need to treat like properly. Okay. So, I mean, um, we've seen like examples in the past, like the, the, the balance between truth, trust and, and, and truth, you know, and so data needs to be communicated in a way that is reliable and because it, it will really influence a lot of, of people. So that's one of the, uh, alarms that I, I want to put on the table. And, and then the other one is, it's obvious that we are apart. But people is still in need of, you know, experiences that will connect people. So I don't know, I, I guess like in every country is more or less the same. Uh, in my neighborhood, like people go out to the balcony and start concerts um, from the balcony. So like people have the need to connect, right? So that's what we need to do. We need to think of experiences that will bring people together. And technology is our allies, of course. So. The questions that, that, that I want to open here is that how can we use technology to make it more meaningful than ever and, and make us feel together apart? Even if we are apart, how, how can we feel uh, together, right, uh, in this situation? And my opinion is that we don't need to digitalize the real world as we know how it exists. We don't need to copy the real world and put it into digital, but think on how we can make this digital reality that we have in our hands and to make it more human. So that, that's, I think, the, the, the point of view that, at least from, from my opinion and from domestic, what we are trying to, to achieve. And yeah, that was a little bit the introduction to, to help the, the conversation. So I will give the word back to Lodi. Thank you, Miguel. Um, that's impressive. Wow, I, I really like the, the prison one. And then, yeah, the other is really the different from the other data visualization that I observe here that uh, you're not only making people to think, but to feel as well. Uh, to, and then uh, you trigger that uh, with a conversational approach that makes people think and uh, can trigger conversation, uh, trigger discussion around, around the audience. That's really um, interesting. Okay. Yeah, uh, I will let uh, audience also, if they have a questions, I will let audience also uh, to okay. ask you. Uh, but I, I also have a question first. So why is that important to have engaging experience in communicating with data? And you say about open dialogue there. And what are the open dialogue that we can create? Okay, so yeah, open dialogue. If you, if you have like some, you know, information that, you think it's relevant to communicate. So then I'm sure that the audience that you are addressing, they have something to say, right? So like, for instance, you're, you're, you're giving a, a very good example with this conference. So if this conversation is interesting, people will ask questions, right? So if we let them be part of the conversations, then we are learning because uh, no, no one has all the answers here. So that's why we believe in, in opening dialogues rather than monologues whenever you communicate with a campaign you know or with a experience or with a, an exhibition because then you will have like lots of people that can contribute to that and and it needs to be engaging and and well one thing that i think is important is that uh the concept of using la a language in which people can relate i think now we were discussing before the call like of the meaning of uh, doc in Indonesian and also in Spanish. And I said, like, a uh, person that is a dog is a lazy person. And you said, like, person that is a dog is maybe like a bad person or something like this. So we have different concepts, right? So we have different metaphors and different references. So also what we try to do when we try to engage people with information is to use their language. So ask them questions first. I understand, like, that you can explain one thing in one way or another way, depending on the audience that you have. So data sometimes is a universal language, but we, I think we need to understand that there are many, many languages. Every person has their own language. So that's also a way that 
we uh, we try to modulate our discourse depending on who are you talking to to, to engage with them and then open this conversation. Mm, it depends on the context as well, yeah. Totally. Exactly, yeah. like this this gate asking if you are looking for love tonight or not. Uh, we've asked in a festival, in the context of a festival, but then we replicated these uh, gates in a in TED conference, for instance. But then they thought the question were a different one, right? Like you cannot use the same examples or same questions uh, for very different contexts, right? So yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, um, every project have a different context because every data have different context and different audience, right? And then mm -hmm. uh, how, do, how do you guys approach that to, to gather a new context before and learnings from the, from the context, from that context before creating a new data visualization or a new communication or conversational uh, mm -hmm. work? How, how, how do oh. you guys approach that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's why I was saying at the beginning that um, we have a very like multidisciplinary team because mm. we approach projects in like uh, many different views. So I think one of the most important part of our team is the research team. So like anthropologists, psychologists that do the, the initial research part because uh, all and any any communication project, we believe that it's a very strategical project. You 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 just don't want to do like a very nice data visualization, you know, very beautiful one. You want something that will really generate an impact, or you want you know some actions to happen. So it it's a very strategic process. So it all starts with understanding really well the context with research, ethnography, and then designing a strategy in which you will op open conversations that will lead into some outcomes. Then, then you can use this data. It's not just like open a conversation and see what happens, but like, it, you know, there is a design on, on what is the information that you want to get then, what is the knowledge that you want to generate, because from that, then you can evolve. Then your brand can turn into, in, into something that will interest your audience better if you get to know better your audience as well, right? So yeah, so definitely like a research team, is the ones that start the project and the ones that finish the project and get the insight. So it's a it's a crucial part of, of the process. Mm, okay. And during this pandemic, the COVID nineteen, uh, we have been trying to shift human engagement again from offline to online. And um, why do we need to step up our game in engaging people through digital experience? Okay, because well, I think mm, like think of an event, right, or a festival. Yeah. Once people have traveled to a different city and they are in a conference room, it's difficult to have people there. Uh, it's, it's easy to have people there uh, paying attention to what you do, right? But in a digital format, like mm, it's very easy to you know to open another tab and watch Netflix. If this yeah. conversation is not interesting, the people will just move, right? So then yeah. we need to step up our game when we are um, digitalizing experiences. When we are creating digital experiences, it's a new. Um, I mean, you need to find ways into people are engaged and they won't be engaged just by watching. You know, I think there needs to be a lot of interactivity, uh, a lot of open conversations. They need to be part of this because otherwise, you know, like uh, we are we are missing these uh, interactions. So we need to to have as much interaction as possible and, and get people really close and involved in 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 what is being discussed, in what is the, the information or, or the data that you are generating or communicating. OK. Um, so the audience engagement didn't just, you know, didn't just happen, right? And how to orchestrate that? I mean, step by step? Or um, do you guys have a formula to gain more audience engagement? <laughs> OK, I think there is not a magical formula for engagement. I think, um, you know, uh, I, I'm repeating some of the concepts that I said before, but I think they, they are part of this uh, formula. I think when you are talking about the topic that it is interesting to you, then you will be more engaged than if it's something that it's, it doesn't go, come with you. That's why, like, you know, personalization. And that's why, like, starting with a question, like, um, will then bring you into uh, into a way to show your data or, or communicate or in another way. Because like let, let's just like first start with a question. Let's understand who are we talking with. 
Um, so that that's I think it's one of the of the keys. Like talk talk with uh, something that the, the, your audience will be interested to engage them. And then I think like um, you know interactivity and 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 again like like uh, action will will be an element that that will make people uh, be engaged. People want to you know that's why all the references that I show you many of the reference you need to do something like you need to perform some action like you, you you're, it's not purely like um digital it's like it, you need people you know to perform some action to to be engaged but what that's why i think interaction in any sense also digital interactions can be but interaction is is also like very very important um yeah and i think it's more or less it i mean there is not the perfect formula but um but every case needs to be tailored. Also, it's, I think it's very important to tailor every every case in 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 the context that we are in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's interesting because the first is to start with a good questions before you have a project, mm -hmm. and then you understand more uh, to your audience. Even uh, maybe it's from ethnographic research, maybe mm -hmm. from desk research, uh, to understand what makes them. Uh, interested and then how to nudge them to take action and then uh, before we 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 creating the final product uh, we need to think about let them to participate to make this project participatory uh, and engage people more and make a meaningful uh, interaction right mm -hmm. okay um yeah exactly. that's it's like uh, like to add something here i think like many companies are now switching into these relational models in which, mm -hmm. like, for instance, like think of uh, Amazon or Netflix. They are not selling you uh, like a product. They are they are selling a relationship with you. Like they, they they are building a relationship in which they know you more and more. Right? It's not like it's it's very customized. It's like it's about it's about you. It's not about what they have. It's about what you want to to consume. Right? So this is a little bit like the approach uh, that I think it it creates this engagement. So, like re relationship based um, um, communication, yeah. Mm. Okay. So, uh, how can we humanize digital experience? Do you think? Yeah, th this is like the Even I think the one million question, <laughs> one million dollar <laughs> question. Um, I think that I mean I'm sure that the, what we need to look at is what makes us human. Right, like yeah. if we want to humanize something, is we need to understand what makes us human, and and I think emotions makes us human. Like I think also we are sometimes you know overwhelmed with uh, chatbots and 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 automated uh, answers and and all this that that it's you know it's like in a very artificial world. So I think people now more than ever needs to you know simple plain and human interactions like uh like putting like many artificial barriers between us um it, it just distanciates us so we as we as humans need to have like human interactions and human interactions are like you know conversations everything that that relates to emotions um so i think it's that, that's the that's the way to follow but uh, again, um, it is not. There is not a magic formula to do that. So every every case is a is a different one, and and yeah, that's what we are trying to do always. Like use a very like human languages. Be, be very engaging with with the language that you use. I'm not referring to English or Indonesian or Spanish. I'm I'm referring to you know languages in which people can relate to, and 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 that's the way we feel you know more connected. Yeah, mm, that's one of the. One of the aspects, if we want to humanize uh, digital experience, yeah. And then mm -hmm. uh, we have a questions from the audience. Uh, do you have tips to communicate data more effectively in an office setting where usually data is presented with boring and graphs, uh, with graphs and charts? Yeah, totally. Yeah. That's that's one of our <laughs> challenge. We, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's like everyday challenge, right, for data visualization. Yeah, uh, how to make that more interesting, engaging in the simple, maybe in the business as usual yeah. approach format. So we have a uh, we created our own tool to gather data from our team, and and it has the boring part in which we ask them, what projects have you been working today? So they have to fill, and then we have all this data, blah blah blah. 
but that's not engaging. But then what we do is we convert this data into like, like I'm reporting how much time I'm spending in one project. And then uh, every week I have a report of what I've been doing. And this data has been translated in with this amount of time, you uh, would have enough time to read uh, El Quixote like 10 times, like, like uh, or Harry Potter 10 times, or you ha had time to do a PhD in the time that you invested in this project, or you have like, like we do like funny conversions of data. So it's not only I'm giving like the data for the business to understand like what we are working, but then I, I can see like uh, I'm reporting in a funny way, like ways that I'm doing. And then another thing that we are doing is we are also creating like emotional KPIs. So at the end of the day, when I report my, my work, there are like a few questions that I customize for myself. So like, uh, I don't know, have you uh, met a new contact today or have you uh, contacted like an old friend today or have you read an English article today or something that I want to do, like maybe a challenge that I have if I want to improve my English so I need to read articles like daily. So then I can, you know, have this KPI for myself and then I'm, I'm, I'm reporting on that. So we are converting, uh, one of the tips I would say is like try to convert uh, all this data that looks like boring into something that has a meaning for, for that person in something that is more creative and then also make them be able to personalize their own data or, or create their own you know, uh, KPIs or, or track uh, data in different ways. We, we are doing something also very interesting that is in, a, in the toilet. In yeah, I saw toilet, that in the second. Ah, you saw that in Instagram? Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> that, that wants to see it, like in domestic data streamers, there is a, we post, um, we do questions to our coworkers, uh, but they are inside the toilet. So with uh, stickers, you mark like A or B, and there's like nice visualizations of, of what people think in like completely random topics, but make, that makes us like feel also more connected and, and explore new ways of, uh, of yeah, show it, visualizing, visualizing data. Yeah, yeah, I saw that interesting because um, in the main toilet you gather. Uh, I forgot about uh, what's the topic, but uh, you get you have a uh, access uh, mm -hmm. that you can uh, plot your belief. You are a capitalist, or you are what? And exactly. the status are you anger or are you? Exactly. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you guys, the audience need to check uh, the digital. Uh, sorry, the domestic data streamers Instagram account. Uh, it's a lot of the interesting new format uh, about data visualization that maybe uh, uh, you can replicate in your own office to make it totally. fun, more fun and engaging with people. Totally. And and I really like how uh, how you guys using a very uh, you know like a dot sticker to gather mm -hmm. more information. Uh, and you you guys uh, a lot of use. Uh, a physical, a physical objects to to make them participate. And mm -hmm. do you have uh, learnings from that uh, about you know involving uh, physical objects to participate in data visualization? Uh, do you have a tips or uh, any learning that you can share to us in merging that data uh, into the physical world? Mm -hmm. No, again, I I think. I mean, technology is a tool that we use when we need to use it, but it's not that we are forced to use it just because, you know, like you need a purpose to use uh, technology. So like with basic things, with analog interactions, you can get like uh, more attention from people than, you know, like with artificial reality, AR, VR, and all these things. We, we also do that, but only when it is needed. So I think like in when we are doing like, these technological conferences like Mobile World Congress and, and, and this kind of event when we participate, like it's all around, you know, robots and VR and AR and, and big screens. And then we create like something that is analog and it's like, it's a breath of air. So people like to grab, you know, one little stone and put it into, uh, you know, a plate and see and see how the balance change. People like to take a thread and, and, and answer a survey instead of, you know, doing like digitally when you have this option. To do. So people like to do things. People like to, to touch things, you know, to, you know, like oh, we, we, we have all these abilities that we are, um, we need to empower. And I think that uh, something as simple as, uh, as the stickers, it, it says, it, it's, it's very, it's so simple that makes people want to interact. And, and of course, then they get creative and 
like in this axis you need to ask how capitalist you are and then you, the, the sticker is not put on the only on the frame but it's put like on the other side of the room like you are very far from from being capitalist like like then it, it also like makes you a step out of the rules because if you have like a completely guided like ux like you have a screen with three buttons and you only can press these three buttons you cannot get out of that but if you have like a different playground like in which you know there are physical elements then people will behave in the totally different ways and you're creating their new interactions so that's that's one of the outcomes when you do analog and and physical interactions okay interesting and then that's the that point is really remind me about uh, in doing data visualization the first thing that we need to consider is uh, our mindset and technology as an enabler to telling the stories but what if we we using any context around us uh, surrounded us to to communicate better uh, data right and exactly and, yeah. and well if i if i may also like um, when you are using physical um, representations you are also cho choosing the right ones depending on the on the um, on what you are talking about like like conceptually like i i showed you like a visualization of tons of paper in a uh, different piles of paper Th those were like emails being sent between different departments of a company right so that was like the metaphor of uh you know one piece of paper was a, was an email was a message so like we yeah. try to use also like the right examples when we try to discuss about uh, different topics because you know like the context and this a little bit like this artistic way of representing data makes people you know be more connected with, uh, with what you are talking like like conceptually so also this is another i don't know tip or or thing that we 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 use okay um times is up Mikel. <laughs> yeah okay. we can we can uh talk more about this after this but mm -hmm. uh if audience are curious about the digital um data streamers domestic data streamers mm -hmm. you can check uh, you can check uh, the instagram uh in instagram account yeah mm -hmm. totally and then yes, yeah uh thank you for your time Mikel. um yeah, uh, it's really, uh, really, really fun to talk to you about the data visualization and stuff. And then um, for the audience, uh, thank you very much for your participation in this session. Uh, jangan lupa untuk uh, donasi ke bagirata.id. Itu adalah platform subsidi silang untuk uh, kita membantu para pekerja yang terdampak um, terdampak oleh COVID-19. Um, bisa didonasi langsung scan QR code aja di samping screen di bawah. Um, terima kasih untuk udah berpartisipasi sama kita. Um, Future Force Fest tang 2020 tanggal 8 sampai 9 Mei uh, itu diramaikan lebih dari 25 orang ahli di bidang bisnis, data, teknologi, uh, riset dan policy. Jadi masih ada besok sesinya. Um, silakan cek ke Ikra silakan ikut sesi Ikra Connect atau buka website ikra iekra.com untuk tahu tentang program-program lain setelah ini dan masih ada hari besok juga. Uh, Oke, okay, kalau mau uh, post ini di sosial media, jangan lupa hashtag siap hadapi perubahan dan sebar semangat dari rumah. Saya Lodi Andrian, uh, undur diri. Selamat sore. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih. Terima kasih, Mikael. <laughs>